Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, welcome to the uh, Museum of the Moving Image screening of Cat Daddies. Um, first off, by a show of hands, how many of you are devout cat lovers? Oh, wow. So the few of you that did not raise your hand, were you dragged here by an insane cat lover? I'll take that as a yes. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Alex Megaro. I'm going to be your host and Q&A moderator for the evening. And I'm a filmmaker. I'm mostly known for uh, narrative work that is very dark and cerebral, getting into the depths of the human soul. <laughs> and a documentary series I do for Vice called Source Material, which is one of the most harrowing things you'll have ever seen. <laughs> so of course I'm perfect to host the night of Cat Daddies. <laughs> um, I'm really here, and I'm very honored to have been invited by my uh, because we met at the Tallgrass Film Festival last year, and we were introduced by a mutual friend, and he comes up and goes, this is my, she directed the film Cat Daddies, and I don't believe I even said any words, I just immediately pulled out my phone, showed her my background, which was my cat, and I proceeded to show her about 1,000 photos of him <laughs> before I even said my name. Uh, and I, too, obviously, am a cat daddy, that is my beautiful, floofy son. His name is Saladin, or his full name is Salahadin Muadib Akram bin Megaro. Never got to say that to more than one person face to face. It sounds completely insane, but it's actually written on his paperwork. He's uh, the love of my life. And he is perfect, he is floofy, I love burying my face in his belly, and it's really the reason that I'm here tonight. <laughs> and uh, all this is really proof that uh, if you are an absolute maniac, you will end up on stage at Momi. <laughs> and some uh, housekeeping here, definitely not prepared remarks. Uh, I'll be moderating the discussion after the credits, so please stay here. We're going to have the filmmakers, some of the subjects in the film, including uh, Will Zweiger, the founder of Flatbush Cats. <laughs> His nonprofit that we are fundraising for tonight, so it's truly amazing. And we'd also really like to thank uh, Meowtel. They're part of why this is happening tonight. Meowtel, the number one cat sitting app. Uh, if you're getting ready to travel soon, you can use a discount code in your Meowtel bag to get $20 off your reservation. And the code is Cat Daddies. <laughs> uh, also, special thanks to Made by Nacho. I love that. Made by Nacho. Uh, for the cat food samples also in your bag. Uh, these are new flavors crafted by Chef Bobby Flay's cat named Nacho. <laughs> Crafted by him, I love it. I can actually say from experience, uh, this boy right here tried it and he totally inhaled it in like one gulp, so uh, your cats will probably enjoy it. I then taste it, it's also pretty good. Uh, what else we got? And uh, yeah, thanks for coming here, supporting an important cause. And before the film, we have a special message that's a sneak preview from Flashbook Cats about a new initiative that they are launching. Also, you'll hear more about it after the show. And then one last thing, possibly the most important thing right now, is there's a certain cat, a very famous internet cat named Gold Kitty. You can see him up here. <laughs> and what we'd love to do is to get a photo of all y'all. But because you got the masks on, we can't really see a smile. So if I count to three and we all put our hands in the air like Goal Kitty, we're all going to shout cat daddies when we do it. Uh, it would be really amazing, and I would appreciate it. Oh, we can't do it yet. We're waiting on the photographer. I'm going to take a photo, too. No, no, we're, so we're going to... Yeah, no. Yeah, all right, everybody. Get those hands in the air, just like Gold Kitty. One, two, three. Cat daddies! One 
one for me. One, two, three. Cat yeah. daddies! I love it, thank you. And enjoy cat daddies. Welcome up to the stage, director Mai Huang, Will Zweiger, David Giovanni, Chris Alisi, Ryan Robertson, Rob Bennett, and Dave Boyle. And then a big one right here. All right, while everyone gets comfortable, Mai, I'd love to start with you. Um, Outside of the obvious, I feel like you say cat daddies, and everyone goes, oh, well, of course, that's a movie. But how did this project originate? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, so I think because of social media, lately men are more proud to show off their cats, taking cat selfies, and, you know, all these, as you saw in the movie, all these hashtags, cat dads and men with cats and such, and there's been books about it, and there hasn't been really a movie about it, and... Um, pictures of men with their cats just like always just made me happy. I got I always get like this Mari Kondo kind of spark joy <laughs> when I see these pictures. It just um, really warms my heart. And at the same time, my husband, when we were dating, he was not a cat guy back then. And um, one day a cat found him and the rest is history. Um, so I got to see him in the before and after and I'm just like, wow, like I can't believe this. Never would have thought this would happen. And, you know, how many other men are out there that don't know that they could love a cat? They've been conditioned for so long to love dogs. Um, if this happened to my husband, this could be anybody. And um, I thought, like, making this movie would have the additional benefit of just, you know, getting the images out there and making it cool to for men to love cats. And I... I just, uh, you know, bef this Cat Daddies wouldn't have happened because I was actually resigned to not making movies anymore. I had been dabbling for decades in the kind of narrative realm, um, making narrative movies. Um, it never occurred to me to make a documentary, but this idea just never um, could get it out of my head, and I just figured, well, I just need to make it, and other people seem to like the idea. Um, real quick, though, were there any men in the audience who are now cat converts because of this film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone just lie and raise your hand. <laughs> uh, since we're here to benefit Flatbush cats, uh, I'm curious, you know, why you wanted to include Will in the film and how you guys got connected originally. I knew very, very early on I wanted to include Flatbush cats. Um, I was already a follower and a fan. Um, I think that Will is just really so gifted at storytelling and communication. Um, I knew that I had to ask him to be a part of this. I'm so glad he did. Um, yeah, I just, I really, I think that Flabbush Cats doesn't, they don't just serve Brooklyn. I think they've been serving the world because I was living in LA and I knew about them and I was getting educated about things about feral cats through them and, and I know that they have fans all over the world and so I just think that what they do, their videos are incredible, like they make us cry and <laughs> they touch us and um, yeah, I, I just think that it just made sense that, that, that we would do this together, so thank you. Thanks for having us. And uh, for you, Will, you did say in the film that you were considering retiring in 2030. I'm curious if that's still the case. And uh, what's been going on with Flatbush Cats since the shooting? Yeah, so some, some context on that. If we think about why nonprofits exist in the first place, they exist to fill gaps in society. And so every nonprofit's goal should be not to exist. Because yes. we solved the problem. We can go home. Uh, rescuers are tired of spending every waking minute when they're not working to put food on the table or pay rent. They are spending every minute outside, nights, weekends, helping cats. 
and uh, I've been working with a wonderful team for years, and so we can now officially say, if there's any doubt, that we cannot rescue or adopt our way out of this. Let's solve the problem. And so I think it is important to have specific goals, and our goal, as you saw at the beginning of the film, is to get right at the root of the problem and actually increase affordable access to veterinary care for every New Yorker, and I'm confident that we can, if we're working together, we can do that by 2030. Yeah. David, Chris, and Ryan. Uh, I just actually, can we just give them a round of applause for amazing uh, This is a very, it's an amazing and important event just because it's the first time everyone's actually been gathered together on stage at once, given the film has been torn around during the pandemic. So this is very, very special. Uh, for each of you, I'm just curious, what was the experience of filming like for you, being documented and uh, having your cats documented? How did you and the cats handle it? I'll start. <laughs> I'll start. Uh, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I'll start with that. Uh, I'm a New York City police officer, been so for about 17 years now. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. We get filmed all the time. <laughs> All the time. Um, so kind of literally nothing new whatsoever. But kind of the passion I had behind my friendship for David and meeting Lucky and the whole pandemic and how difficult that was. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was a very different feeling. It kind of got to be, in our particular case, a very serious feeling. Um, but ultimately, I, I, I wanted to... I'm very, very happy to be part of this, but I wanted other folks, I wanted this to kind of be an avenue to get David as much help as we can and kind of get as much attention on this as well. You know, I had met David, I'll be very brief, but um, as part of a homeless initiative, and David was obviously very special and we became good friends, but there were so many more. Uh, you know, homeless folks out there that really need services and, and really need help and, and really want it as well. So it was kind of to bring attention to that as well uh, as a kind of a peripheral goal. I think this is very, very special. And what I did is just, uh, I'm very, very humbled to be part of it. So thank you very much. Uh, for me, it was very, Easy. I mean, this is such a nice people. I met Robbie and May, so it was really easy to get along with them, you know. And lucky, always happy to meet other people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, everyone. I appreciate for being here. Thank you. experience of filming when they came over was awesome. It was just a full day of fun filming, and I'm just glad that uh, Toodles can be a part of it. You know, it's, it's just, I, I just think me and Megan and I, you know, think it's so amazing that um, that uh, Toodles is getting all this light, and, and more people know Toodles than, you know, because of the, the film festival. Yeah, it, was, it was just an awesome experience, and thank you. Awesome movie, and yeah. <laughs> You started out trying to be an actor and yes. go in the stunt, and now you're in like a doc. You're in, you're are in a movie. That's, and that's, that's funny, right? That's funny. Right? And, and you know, since then, since since we spoke and we did this uh, documentary, I've done so many other things, including you know acting. I remember I, I spoke to you about it. So yeah, yeah you get, there, there's something coming out called Monarch. You guys look for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Who's next? <laughs> One more question for our cat daddies. Uh, are there any updates you could give us on how your cats are doing? How are you? Yeah. <laughs> cats are doing amazing. Oh, doing amazing. wait, you have some new ones. Yes, yes, I got some new ones and really interesting stories of how we got them. 
I don't know if you guys want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Their names. Their names. Oh well, we have we have Ryder and we have a coconut, little coconut, and <laughs> the, the cats are doing fantastic. Um, and uh, the, how we caught, how we got, we caught, how we got Ryder is one day we were driving down Highway 400 in uh, in Georgia, and um, Megan, my daughter, really hi, daughter. <laughs> and you know we were driving up, we we're driving up and. Um, and I looked to the left, and I thought I saw something clinging to the uh, the median. And I was like, I was like, Megan, I think that's a cat. So we, drew, we went all around the next exit, came back around, and I was like, that was a cat, a little tiny cat clinging on, clinging on to the, the the median for its bare life. And we pulled over on the side of the road, and Megan hopped out the car, and I hopped out after, and she just ran over and grabbed a uh, little rider. Right now, and brought her up, and you know, took her and got her all the good stuff, and now she's home and living the life of uh, luxury. <laughs> and uh, Megan and I, we run all the time. And one night, we were running, and we found Coconut, and Coconut was talking to us from across the street. We didn't see her <laughs> like for two days, and we just heard her. So we put food out there. And uh, we didn't see her until we went running, and and then uh, there was like a little, a little white uh, figure going in the grass. So Megan grabbed her, and she was like, "Ryan, a kitty," and I was like, "Oh, I guess we got another kitty." <laughs> so <laughs> took her in. Same thing. We we bring him in the bathroom. We feed him. We take care of him for the night. Then following day, we take him in to the vet and do all the good stuff, and then we bring him on in. So we have three inside cats now, and. Ten? How? What is it? Ten. ten outside cats. So we have we have ten, and you know they're all family, and we feed them all, and they're part of the grocery bill, and take care of them. <laughs> yeah. They're all <laughs> so, fixed. I'm sorry. Yes, they're all fixed. All fixed. Especially Ricky. Ricky's, uh, R R Ricky's, Ricky's populating the block. You know. <laughs> so yeah. But you know, awesome. And for uh, David and Chris. How are you doing, cats, whatever? Yep, um, I'm still a one cat dad, still Pez. Pez is doing really good, and she's still waking me up every hour of the day. <laughs> and it's always the days that I have to get up really early for work, so. But she's doing great. Yes, uh, I see my cat uh, every weekend. Actually, I'm still in a shelter, and it's very loud there, to be honest with you. it's. I don't want to stress him out. He's really can take stress that well. So I am still have it, my cat. And times and times I bring, uh, he stays with me a couple of weeks here, but mostly he's over there in the hostel. And I stay with him all weekends, every weekend. So with he misses me and he always comes and yeah. never leaves my side. So um, I'm a very lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Down at the end there, we got Rob and Dave, and I'm curious what your roles are on this film, and uh, what were some of the interesting struggles you may have come up against having to film cats who are not not necessarily trainable outside of Gold Kitty. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was the director of photography, um, which means I was behind the camera for the whole movie. Um, it was definitely, uh, it was pretty interesting. It varied cat to cat. Um, uh, but, you know, we mostly tried to go in there, uh, not be too intimidating, not bring too much stuff. So it was almost always just me, Dave, my, um, and the camera. Um, and, uh, and me being on my belly on the ground quite a lot. <laughs> I'm Dave. Um, I'm the husband from my story about the guy who was in the It's probably a little weird that I'm sitting all the way over at the end. But that was just because, you know, I, I think everybody was more interested in what everybody down that way has to say. Um, 
I was the producer, editor, and sound guy on this. I am not a, a sound guy by trade, but this being the low budget documentary that it is, we just, I was the best that we could do. <laughs> More than that. great. More than once, I got myself all wound up in the in the cord, the what's it called, the boom cord. I don't know what the terminology is, but the device that connects the microphone to the recorder got all wound up and it fell down on my face. Um, it was especially hard on me filming Ryan because he spends so much time on film sets. I just could feel the whole day. I was like, this guy knows that I do not know. <laughs> Like, this guy has had people setting a mic properly on him many, many times, and he knows. Um, but you know, I tried not to let paranoia get the best of me. Um, what was the question again? Yeah. Well, the challenge of, of recording a cat is, you know, you hold the microphone over them, and then they just want to. They just want to hit it. And so half the time I'd be like, well, this isn't going to work. Rob, you on your own. And I'd just go pick up lunch or whatever. Um, but then we found that if you kind of moved it in the right way, you could get the cat to look the, you know, where you wanted them to look. So it'd be sort of like, you know, if we wanted to get the cat to look kind of close to the camera, then I would just sort of move the microphone right above the camera and then it would just come. And take a part. So, yeah. My only advice on filming cats is shoot in slow motion because they move too fast. <laughs> That's not my department. Uh, another question for mine. You shot a majority of this throughout 2020, and uh, a little something happened that year that made shooting kind of difficult. I'm curious what kind of struggles you face trying to complete the film in the middle of the pandemic and how uh, it affected the eventual final product and how you found your through lines that way. Oh, this was uh, really, really tough to finish, as you can imagine. Um, we, we, had, we had cat deaths that we had planned to film and couldn't even film. Uh, we, either due to we couldn't travel to them during that time or because um, we had lost momentum on the project and so therefore, understandably, they lost interest. And uh, so we were just waiting in the wings a lot, you know, to get back to New York. To, I mean, there's so many problems. It was so stressful. Um, the only reason we finished was because of Rob down there because he he happened to when we fit we finished shooting March 2020 uh, Rob happened to stay with his family on the East Coast and Dave and I went back to LA um, the only we have it was either like we just wait this out because at the time we're thinking it could be a couple of months then we get back into it or do we just keep pushing ahead and just get it done and that meant Rob had to do everything. He had to do sound, he had to do camera, he had to drive himself around. He Actually, had... I gotta give a shout out to my brother Victor. Oh uh, yeah, Victor. <laughs> and I was just on the phone at home. So I mean that's kinda that sucks. I don't that's not how I wanted to play that to play out, but that's what happened. Uh, wouldn't have finished without Rob. Rob was with Will the entire time, all of that. Will was gracious enough to loan us footage um, that he had already used for Flappish Cats. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to get that otherwise. Um, so yeah, a lot of compromises, a lot of, um, of that. And, and um, I mean, what really pushed us through was like we wanted this to help David and it just, we just had to keep going no matter what it took. But it was also really stressful to figure out how do we keep everybody safe, especially David, because at that time he was a very high risk and you know he's so mean and compromised. Like this was high stakes. It was just really worrying us to death. Um, but we we really wanted to finish because like we wanted to get this out as soon as possible because um, he need, needed the help obviously and um, and, and we love him so dearly and we just 
you know, wanted to see this through. Um, then, you know, I was seeing, so obviously I didn't set out to make this kind of movie. Um, it just kind of turned that way. I was, I was seeing new kind of through, new through lines I hadn't seen before. Like you have Nathan, the cat lady who, um, you know, he has like a revolving door of roommates and every time he loses a roommate, he seems like to adopt another cat. Um, <laughs> this is very common and, and then you have um, Jeff and Aaron who have Zulu and they want to be roommates and they, you know, just have obviously the high cost of living makes it really hard for them to find enough space for their pets. Um, and then, of course, you know, David and Lucky also have very limited options, too. I mean, all of this um, kind of has a ripple effect to our pets. Like, we can't find the space, we can't afford the space to have them in, or we can't afford for their health care. Um, you know, it's going to make it very hard to find homes for, you know, the, you know, to, to, to make a dent in this overpopulation crisis. It's actually a perfect segue to a question I have for Will. Um, there's a theme in the film about housing insecurity, and we're living in a time of just you know insane rent hikes and just general lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we tend to we don't normally think of the ripple effect that has. It's not just someone who can't have can't live in a home. There's there's uh, broader health and economic issues that come with that. I'm curious, you being in uh, your work with Flatbush Cats, if you've seen how the, the crisis of housing has rippled and affected uh, your organization, adoption rates, and what have you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's all connected. The more we, we look into these, these types of issues, these complex issues, we realize they are all connected and we are all connected to each other. And so of course they're gonna have myriad effects we don't always see. There are over 200,000 eviction cases in, in New York City Housing Court right now. So you can imagine the types of impact that will have across uh, other spaces. And I think what drives a lot of the volunteers um, that I'm fortunate enough to work with is that we get to help people first and foremost, because what this film does illustrates so perfectly is that pets are family. And so when people suffer and, and we have an affordability crisis, we can't afford health care, we can't afford to have families, we can't afford housing, we can't afford to go to school, uh, we're going to have an issue with keeping our families healthy. And so we're at an inflection point right now where we get to decide if we want to live in a world where pets are a privilege or whether everyone deserves the type of companionship that we, we saw and it was celebrated in this film. So we want to work, work really hard to turn the tide on that and make sure that everyone has a chance to enjoy that bond. I think you're hitting on an important point that uh, a film like this actually is more important than someone might think seeing, oh, Cat Daddy's a at a film festival, it's going to be a cute film. There is, a, there is actual importance and cultural relevance beyond uh, initial thought for this. So, Maya, I'm curious where this film is going, what might be happening with distribution. How can we get more people to see this? Uh, well, we're looking for distribution. Um, we're kind of at the tail end of our um, North American you know, film festival run. Um, let me ask a question to the audience. Like, how many of you have a friend that you think would like this movie? You raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't already told them, we actually are doing, um, for the first time, a virtual live stream with Flatbush Cats. Will and I will be there. Uh, we'll it's be, be kind of like a watch party online, and um, we're selling tickets now. It's on Saturday, April 9th, and it's open to anyone in the U.S. So. Um, you can tell your friends to tune in. Um, all that stuff is on our website, catdaddiesmovie.com. You all got a postcard in your bag um, that has information and the date and everything like that. So, so that's an experiment. We're trying that out. Um, it's going to take a while to get out there. I know people are constantly asking me when they can stream it, when it and all this stuff. And you know, you can through some film festivals, but. Um, 
for the greater audience, it will be, I would say, predicted by like next year, it'll be available, but if you can't wait, obviously there's this April 9th event we're doing. Um, and you know, while I have the movie um, kind of in my hand, in my court, before it's sold somewhere, I'm allowing um, Cat Rescues to use it as a fundraiser. We've been doing this with Flatbush Cats. Um, so, because you know, once it's streaming, it's gonna be harder to like, you make an event like this. And I really, I, I made this for the big, big screen, to be honest. And I want, you know, this, you guys are so lucky. This is the best I'd ever seen it projected <laughs> sounding. And I wanted to do justice to the people who worked on the movie, like Dave who did the sound and Rob who shot the movie. So I would love for people to um, see it this way. And also if we can do some good and help you know organizations raise money we are so happy um, to do that while we can before it's available all over the world but we do have a sales agent and they are going to launch the movie uh, during the can film uh, film market and trying to launch sales so I think it will we're optimistic it'll do well internationally so everyone will be able to see it all over the world it's awesome Uh, we were running a little long, so my end final thoughts. Yeah, so I just want to thank um, you for hosting the probably the best Q and A we've had so far, and um, the volunteers that helped out tonight. Um, I have uh, Kickstarter backers who who traveled here to be here with us, um, and I want to thank all of you guys. I love you guys. Uh, this it's just amazing to me because you didn't know me and you said yes without hesitation to me, a woman. And this has been one of just the best experience of my life and thank you for making this happen. Thank you. who weren't here or can't be here with us today. I love them too. So um, it's just been actually very comforting to me to work on this. Um, you know, 2020 was really rough year on me and all of us um, just dealing with just the election and all that stuff. Just sitting down and editing you guys and just being in your world was so comforting and soothing. And I hope that other people will also find it soothing to them, and um, and thank you, and thank you all for staying so much, and please tell your friends, and we're on Instagram at, and Facebook, and it's at Cat Daddy's Movie, it's very easy to find us, it's easy to, to find me. Um, yeah, tell your friends, and we have a lot of cat food samples left, so <laughs> please feel free to grab more on your way out, give it to your friends, and spread the word. Thank <laughs> you.